you. Your reaction to what Iran has done? Well, it's obvious that it was a major humiliation for the Israeli regime. They crossed the red line and they got punished for it. Of course, the Israelis can say 110% of the drones and missiles were downed. Uh, that's fine. But uh, they can also take journalists to see the bases that the Iranians have said were severely damaged. They can easily do that today or tomorrow. Uh, are you sure it's major? Because I saw on Twitter you said it was just a small slap in the face. Oh, it was a small slap in the face for Iran. The two bases were severely damaged. But uh, Iran has a huge uh, stockpile of drones and missiles. And Iran hasn't used its most advanced weapons. So if there's... What, what, what would they be, Professor? Nuclear weapons? No, they're more advanced drones and missiles. Iran is not like the United States, which has and uses and has already used nuclear weapons. Iran's peaceful program, as we've seen over the years, has been peaceful, and there's never been any evidence to show otherwise. But Iran has more advanced drones and missiles. And the very fact that the Americans don't want to be a part of any uh, Israeli counter-response shows that the Americans know where the power lies. So the smart thing for the Israeli regime to do would be to refrain from responding. Uh, they got their punishment and they should live with it. Uh, they can say that 200% of the drones were down and 300% of the missiles were down, but as long as they keep quiet, they'll be safe. But if they strike Iran again, it's going to get much worse. And do you think that could happen? Well, the Israeli regime is a genocidal regime. It has no morality. It has uh, its leaders are not sane in the way in which we would view people as sane. No sane person carries out genocide. Uh, but I think they also are calculating uh, what will happen if the regime continues to attack Iran, then Iran will attack harder next time. And then if they do it again, Iran will continue to strike back. And uh, that is not something that's sustainable for such a small and vulnerable regime, which is already lost on the battlefield in Gaza and on the border with Lebanon. Do you think either government has the best interests of its people at heart? Yes, Iran definitely does. Iran is protecting its citizens. The Israeli regime bombed uh, an Iranian embassy murdering people, and your government, the British government, refused to condemn it at the UN Security Council. The US government and the French government refused to do that. So when the West uh, prefers the law of the jungle, and when they believe that they can strike and kill and carry out genocide whenever they want, but others cannot respond when they are, when they are attacked, then the, the rest of the world has to uh, devise means by which to protect themselves. And the reason why Iran has such a powerful missile and drone capability that even Western capitals acknowledge grudgingly uh, is because Iran has to protect itself from these sort of aggressive uh, actions. So the Israeli regime, I think, will think very carefully in future about striking Iranians. In fact, I think the most important thing that comes out of this exchange is that uh, Iran has struck the Israeli regime directly. And that means that from now on, if the Israeli regime targets Iranians anywhere, that Iran will hit back at Israel itself. The Israelis brought this upon themselves and they'll have to live with it. How do you think a war between Israel and Iran would end? Israel has failed to take the Gaza Strip, a dot on the map. That is a humiliating defeat. It has failed to even maintain its borders. Well, well, it, it would say, up. sorry to interrupt you, Professor, but it would say its operation there hasn't finished. Well, after six months, if they can't take the small Gaza Strip, that doesn't say much for the regime. Uh, Iran is uh, the most important uh, country in Western Asia. It's the most powerful country in Western Asia. And uh, Iran uh, has the upper hand. If the Israeli regime chooses to continue this conflict, they will pay a heavy price. And as I said, the, I think the United States has so far recognized this and has been more intelligent. The fact that the Americans have so far from what we've heard said that they don't want to be a part of any escalation is because they know that Iran's capabilities can drive 
the prices of oil through the roof. If the United States attacks Iran, then uh, those countries that host U.S. bases, they will be seen as a partner in crime. And oil and gas installations uh, in this region will be destroyed. That would lead to a global economic catastrophe. The Americans, I think there are enough sane people in Washington who recognize that. So I don't think we'll have war. So for Iran, going back to what you asked before, is the government acting in the interest of the Iranian people? Yes, Iran has never initiated a war, but Iran has shown the United States, the Israeli regime, that if they initiate conflict with Iran, they will be punished. And that is what has kept our country safe. There will be, just to finish off, differing views on what you've said, certainly in terms of Iran's actions via its, you may call them allies, others may call them proxies with the Houthis, with Hamas, with Hezbollah, in that Iran is an aggressor. It's not on a defensive posture. I think you and I both know, and your colleagues know, and everyone knows, that the Israeli regime is an apartheid regime. It is an ethno-supremacist regime. It carries out ethnic cleansing, and it kills Palestinians on a regular basis, not just in Gaza, in the West Bank. And what we are seeing in Gaza has been going on for decades. And the and uh, right now we are all witnessing a genocide. So I don't think when we look at the Yemen or Lebanon or Gaza, the victim is Israel. 